Hello, wheelers. Welcome to When Wagon Wheels Were Bigger, the podcast that's too shy, shy, hush, hush, I do I. We're too shy, shy, hush, hush. <laughs> I fucking lost the rhythm. Sorry. Keep going. Uh, Keep no, going. I've done enough of that. Um, we're not Keep really going. shy, uh, although now I'm quite embarrassed. Um, this is the <laughs> podcast that watches old 80s TV shows, usually 80s TV shows, usually kids TV shows, uh, watches the first episodes and talks over them and ruins them if you liked them and uh, just justifies your dislike of them if you hated them. My name's Martin French. I'm Mark. And I've got a surname as well, but you should know <laughs> it by now. Secret. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this week, uh, Mark has suggested that we watch Wurzel Gummidge. Uh, why did you enforce this upon us? Why? Um, do you know what? I After watching this earlier, um, I'm not sure I ever watched Wurzel Gummidge <laughs> growing up. <laughs> I was aware of it, certainly, and Aunt Sally and, you know... A cup of tea and a nice slice of cake. Yeah. But in a West Country accent, not a northern one like I did for some reason. Um, I, was, I think I was doing an impression of Sue Pollard then <laughs> when I did it. Um, You'll never be a yellow court. Hi, <laughs> hi, campers. <laughs> um, but this, uh, yeah, it's awful. Um, I mean, we'll talk about why it's awful when we, as we watch it's it. For several um, reasons. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah I, I, apparently I wasn't really. A, f- a fan or even watched it because I don't remember any of this um, I remember like I said elements like the crow man and things mm. but th- this starts off like a cheap 70s horror film <laughs> it's awful isn't it <laughs> it is it's quite scary it reminds me of that episode of Round the Twist when they've got the scarecrow coming oh, alive oh god yeah that, that goes all alive mm. <laughs> in their garden and then there's a clown underneath which is doubly terrifying for me <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world it's the worst thing in the world <laughs> when you hear it laughing um, it would only be worse if spiders came out of its straw eyes before oh, it turned into a clown <laughs> oh that's oh, I'm going to be having nightmares tonight about that I think we all are um, now, now, technically, this is not from the eighties, the pilot, is it? But no, if, no. if and when we ever watched it, we would have been watching it in the eighties, yeah. Uh, because, um, well, you'd have only just been born in nineteen seventy nine. Yes, I would have been. I never saw any of the seventies for reals with my own eyes. So, uh, to it's... be fair, what I saw of the seventies with my own eyes, I don't remember. That's just lazy, and isn't that's it? not because it was a seventies man. <laughs> it was because. <laughs> I was literally a baby. <laughs> so um, we're giving this one a pass because uh, we've done worse than just do something that just is outside of the 80s before. We've um, done worse or gummage. Uh, yeah. Doesn't really work, but it doesn't. I it thought is, it. I, and it I said good. it. So It's cleverer than most of our remarks on it this is. podcast, isn't it? So, so you've yeah. been listening to When Michael Wills Were Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Always leave them on a high. <laughs> yeah, better go now. Um so yeah, we're going to watch it. I, now, I know I did watch some of this, because I remember it used to terrify me uh, as a child. Whatever yeah. I've seen of it, I, I have horrible memories of it. Um, and it, it, like you say, this does nothing to, to quell those fears. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, I imagine that I probably didn't watch it because I was scared of it. And as we've established on previous episodes, I was pretty much scared of most things as a kid. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and... Uh, the thing is, though, if I saw a scarecrow like that in a field, I would probably not go anywhere near it. These kids kind of just wander <laughs> up to it. Yeah. Did that move? Let's go and have a look. No, if I thought something moved that should be an anima, I'm not going to go near it. I'm yeah. going to leave it well alone. Yeah. If a, a weird effigy of a crucified man starts moving in a field, I'm going to run the other direction as fast as I can. Definitely. And, you know, let's face it, that won't be fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll roll down the hill. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, fat jokes, right? I'm uh, sorry, it's fine. I made it. Um, are we ready to uh, to press play and get this over with as quickly as possible? Yeah, I'm hoping that if I when I push play, it will actually play. We've established before that the device I watch on isn't <laughs> always reliable. <laughs> um, so hopefully, 
after I do the countdown, we will be watching together. So there, there is a, a, probably a little warning before we start watching. We both have... Now, neither of us are quite sure what yellow markers mean on uh, a timeline on YouTube. Our sort of assumption is that there might be advert breaks in this or some kind of ad uh, sort of stuck in between. So if we lose timing, nobody will care and it will amuse us. But just in case anything goes wrong, there's your... Uh, there's your warning beforehand. Yeah. I have I have got four yet. Now I've blown this bigger up on on the screen. There are four yellow markers. I've so. got one at about fifty eight second, uh, one minute and six. Sorry, one at about seven oh four. Yeah, and so on. So it seems to be about every seven minutes. There's That's a yellow enough. marker. So if something happens that we're not prepared for, it will happen to both of us. <laughs> but it's fine. We'll probably talk about other stuff anyway. We'll talk about what's going on anyway. Happens. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So providing this works, three, two, one. Where's the gummage? <laughs> Even this opening is is quite scary. It is, Ugh. which is my worth saying. It worked. It's playing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's way. Oh. Oh, grin. He's got the perfect face for to play a scarecrow, though, John Pertwee. He has. Do you know? I was reading. It was something like six hours of makeup. Really? They were backwards in the seventies, weren't they? With makeup, <laughs> that took six hours. Well, they only had to do his face. Well, just his nose, really. I just suppose. shove a load of straw, put some Pritt stick and stick a load of straw to his face. I mean, it must be like a, a chin uh, thing as oh, well. Oh, yeah, like true. A chin putty, I suppose, and covered him in mud in this one. But mm. Yeah, that's what's scary, is when the mud starts coming off. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, so the story is these two kids and this dad are going to go live in a caravan for a reason <laughs> on a farm. Um, and the boy needs a wee, and then they... See, I thought this was quite, maybe progressive isn't the word, but showing someone having a toilet break. <laughs> <laughs> is that the kind of thing you wish was on TV more? Are you saying that you want to see children weeing no, in fields? No, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> in any shape or form. <coughs> Why is he in a school uniform? It's just what kids wore in the 70s. Oh, is it? At the oh, end right. of the 70s. They had to wear school uniforms, even on Sundays. Right, oh, okay. God, this is creepy. Oh, Let's see. I would be running a mile. Yep. <laughs> I mean, if I wasn't already urinating on a fence, I'd certainly be urinating in my trousers at that point. <laughs> what, man? I do like the dad in this. He is uh, a brilliant uh, 70s character. He's very he uh, very stereotypical. So, basically, the, while the kid was um, having the wee break in from the car journey, Wurzel Gummidge, with his back to him, starts waving or blowing in the wind, is what the dad says was happening. Yeah. Um... And we get our first sight now of the Crow Man, who mm. fixes scarecrows. And looking at what he's got in his uh, trailer is also a chimney sweep. <laughs> yeah, and has a dog called Ratter, which is what everyone in the country does with their dog: is go <laughs> ratting. <laughs> the whereabouts in the country is this supposed to be set? Do we know? Is it Somerset? Because they all do seem to have that sort of accent. Or the West Country? It could be Devon, I suppose. I suppose. But so. it could be Norfolk because they've got a very similar accent in Norfolk. Yeah, that's true. They? It's a bit ambiguous, at least in this episode. It is, and of course, the guy who plays the Crow Man was also Cat Weasel, so he just likes playing trampy-looking characters. <laughs> no, well, it's you find your uh, niche, I suppose. You go with it. Yeah. So now this at the moment isn't John Pert we were looking at. It's a genuine scarecrow with a robin red breast mm. that is uh, nesting in his chest. From Looks like just footage from some kind of wildlife documentary there as well. It did, didn't it? I'm going to see if I can find out where it's set. A far-flung future. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I think the opening also has a bit of a feel of those, um, like... Uh, what were the, like the things with the kids on the farm? Those warning videos, um, um, public information movies, public information films. It has a feeling of that, it's because the, the way that it's shot, it, uh, that was that was the kind of thing that we saw filmed in this style when we were kids, more yeah. than anything else. Um, but also because the kids aren't wearing seatbelts, and I'm just expecting a horrible accident to happen. Yeah, uh, Scarecrow murders them. <laughs> <laughs> He's standing up as the car is moving along. That's awful. Well, that's what it was like in the 70s. And the 80s, to be fair. Wear a seatbelt, kids. Well, seatbelts weren't a thing. No one cared. Unless you were in the front seat. No one could care less. So there's the crow man talking to Wurzel from a distance. And then they they doff their caps to each other. And the dad doesn't even look. Because I think, uh, it doesn't matter how jaded you are, I think if your kids said to you, 
that scarecrow just waved his hat at that man, I think you'd stop and go, what, really? <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, but also because of my innate fear of scarecrows coming alive and eating my face, I'd probably look <laughs> from fear that it might be happening. <laughs> you might drive away a bit faster. But, I, might um... drive, I might drive through that gate over it, <laughs> <laughs> over the scarecrow, just again to make sure. <laughs> You're not eating my face, you straw bastard. <laughs> Kick it to bits, kids. Come on, join in. Kick them all to bits. Ah, the crow man, it's another scarecrow. Kick him to bits. <laughs> <laughs> to bits. Yeah, if you ever hear of a spate of um, scarecrow <laughs> kickings, it's probably me. Or, or just tramps who look a bit like scarecrows. <laughs> <laughs> that little girl looks really familiar. That she grew up to be... Obviously, she grew up to be someone. That was would have been a ridiculous sentence I was about to say. No, I know what you mean. Though, she grew yeah. up to be in other things. Uh, um, I'd have to look her up now. Yeah, it might be worth just seeing if there's any famous names in this, apart from Cat Weasel and Doctor Who, or The Doctor, sorry for anybody who gets offended by that kind of thing being got wrong. But, you know, we don't care. No, nah, not really. Doctor Who. Doctor Wurzel Gummidge. <laughs> I tried to look on IMDb, but um doesn't want to let me. Probably because I'm playing iTunes. I'm playing YouTube. Recording from it. Skype and trying to look at the internet at the same time. <laughs> I've got about 3% left on my phone, but I will try. My broadband is kind of like, were you taking the piss or what? You're trying to do all these things at once. <laughs> <laughs> this kid's weird. Oh, my God, oh that's Christ, that's awful. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> oh. Charlotte Coleman. Oh, she was in Four Weddings and a Funeral. That's what I recognise her from. She was the uh, Hugh... What's his face? Hugh Grant's friend. In that, that's what I recognise oh, it from. I haven't seen it. Um, the the massive overreaction that uh, I just gave uh, was because the scarecrow t turned um, to the camera in a really sort of menacing way. It was really menacing. We should also like to point out at this point that we've gone past the first yellow marker and nothing untoward has happened, so <laughs> we must fine. be okay. If anyone knows what they, those yellow markers are and they want to tell us, obviously you can tweet us at spread the whimsy. Um, which I'll tell you now because you might not make it through this yeah. to the end. So if you could uh, Google what they are for us and let us know. Yeah, because I can't be asked. Oh, I'm not going to, but I don't care enough. So basically, he's moving on to this. Well, he's moving into some old gypsy caravan <laughs> on a farm, <laughs> and he's going to look for work. Well, he doesn't really go and look for work, does he? He's, he's an electrician, well, no. and he gets told quite flat out that there's not much cause for that round here. Which I think is explained because they all have to do their own electric, uh, like electric work. But I, it really does initially sound like everything runs on steam in the country. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does, doesn't it? It still does. My internet is powered by steam. Right, fade to black. Oh, oh, hang on. Mine's yours faded to black. Mine's, mine's gone to an advert. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pause yours a minute. <laughs> I will do. Oh, hang on, I can skip the ad. I went to an advert for Turkish Airlines. <laughs> what, is it that, that Batman versus Superman one? Sadly not. Oh, shame. There um, go, keep again, an man. eye on the timer. What time is your say? Uh, 7.06. Brilliant. I'll just, I'm on 7.15, so... So, um, Benny from Crossroads just came out of the back of a caravan then. Am I safe to play? Go. Yeah. There we go. They're looking off into the distance. That's They're the it. kids. That's They've just gone off. So that might happen again. I spoke right. too soon when I said... Yeah. So you might get one in a minute. <laughs> okay. So um, Benny from Crossroads is now showing the kids some sheep. I do like that scene though when he's saying those are sheep, those are pigs, those ones over there are chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, you, we, you, we told us that already. I know this is the end of the tour. <laughs> so, to sum up, <laughs> reasonably funny. Well, townies don't know what chickens are, do they? No. He looks a little bit like the. Actor who was in The Wrong Man's with James yes, Corden. Yes, he does. Yeah, I can't, I can't think what his name is, but he was in that um, Me, You, and the Apocalypse thing that was on before Christmas as well. Maybe he's his dad. And was in Horrible Histories. It might be. Probably be about the right up. age. I could look it. Oh, do you know what? I've got. I've still got IMDb open. Let's have a look. Probably isn't. This is also quite interesting to me, at least, that these are kids that are not annoying. Yeah. I don't want to kick them up the arse at all. Like they both seem to be like they're they're just sarcastic enough to be quite believable and and in you know interesting. Uh, the dad has now just gone to the pub. That is his pressing business in the village. Okay, to to the yeah, pub. Clearly, 
So they're going to go and check out the scarecrow now because, you know, he's already been scared by it twice, but let's just <laughs> go back and have another look. But now he's got the chance to scare his sister as well, and you wouldn't give that up, would you? No, never. Oh, in 1980, the one who played the dad had chart success with the 1913 song, The Sunshine of Your Smile. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Doesn't say he's the dad of that guy, and I can't be bothered to look anymore, so I'm not going to... No, probably um, won't, because nobody knows that guy's name anyway. <coughs> it is uh, Mike Berry. Okay. No, I mean the guy from The Wrong Man's. Oh, yeah, I could look that up as well. Nah. So it's starting to rain now, and it's going to wash the mud off of Wurzel's face, uh, which is one of the scarier moments of it this, is, isn't as it? human faces revealed. They're borrowing his umbrella. Yeah, and he's just stealing said they can. It. Well, no, he let they asked, and he said, "Oh, ah," which I think is yes in in Somerset, isn't it? In in Scarecrow, definitely. <laughs> oh, I wish Dad had bought me some more clothes other than my school uniform. What's that game doing? Kind of it's weird. They, they're them. both taking their clothes off, and I'm really glad that it cuts to another scene because it starts <laughs> yeah. to get really uncomfortable. It's weird, isn't it? Don't like it. So I don't remember this. Maybe I blocked this out when I was watching it earlier. I think the first version we both watched was uh, quite a faded. Um, I think someone has filmed it from well. the TV or something. It did look weird, so we did find another link oh, in the Who does in the that? Loads of people on YouTube do it. That's who. Oh god, this is you're right. This is basically a horror movie at the start. It is. The first sort of 10 or 15 minutes is yeah, deliberately even with the lightning and the oh, the slow eyes eye opening. opening. Ugh. Yeah, I don't like it. And a crow just sort of not being scared by him <laughs> proving that he's actually <laughs> useless. Yeah, well that's the thing as well. The crow man who makes scarecrows? You think with a name like the Crow Man, he'd love crows. You would. <laughs> I'm a flippy floppy scarecrow with a desire oh, to murder. Like a zombie. Ugh. We could get my umbrella back. That is fresh out of like the original Night of the Living Dead. It <laughs> that, really that is. Sort of the shot choice, the music, <laughs> everything about it. This uh, the woman who plays the farmer or the farmer's wife or whatever. She her voice is very familiar to me. Yeah, I thought that she reminds me. The, it made me think of the one who played Nursie in Blackadder. That's what I'm thinking of. I don't know. It's not the same woman. Though, I is don't it? think it is. She looks too old to be Nursie. Yeah. Her, but then this was seventy nine. So well, when when that would have been? I'd been eighty five. Yeah. I am deep again. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name in this? Uh, Farmer's Mrs. wife. Braithwaite, I think. Mrs. Braithwaite, okay. Mrs. Braithwaite. Mrs. Braithwaite. Oh, oh, no, hang on. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Ah, shh. There we go. Make the Jenkins. Dad, the dad is going back into the village for some more pressing business, which I think is another visit to the pub. Uh, so again, <laughs> <laughs> Either way. Oh god, um, slow turns to camera just on not. Oh god, that's, that's the look oh. on his face. No, it's not the one who played Nursey. But she, her voice is very similar, isn't it? Yeah. God, looking through the window, there's nothing good about any appearance of Wurzel at all. None at all. It's bloody terrifying. Yeah, it is. And then he starts harassing a boy in shorts from a window or oh, a skylight or something. <laughs> For one of those ceiling windows. <laughs> <laughs> like the Romanies have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give us back my umbrella. I mean, it's perfect casting, really. It is. He's very good. Mm -hmm. As the part. And I haven't seen any appearances that, but there are lots of links to him being very witty on chat shows. Apparently, like he's, um, by all accounts, John Pertwee was a very funny guy in real life. Yeah, I, th I, you know, he's probably one of the better doctors, I'd say as well. He definitely made the part his own, didn't he? I yeah. think they all they all do to a certain degree, but he's one of the more memorable portrayals of the Doctor. He is. This is all warping on my screen now. Yeah, it's Am like... I... Oh, <laughs> good, I've wondered what I'd been in my drink. I was trying <laughs> no. to think maybe I'm hallucinating. Oh, God, oh, yeah, that was weird. As the camera moved, the whole thing is... It's like being on a boat. Yeah. Or looking at it underwater. Yeah. It's freaking me out. So the link that we're watching, uploaded by Lewis Watts, 
seems to have some kind of drug filter on it. He seemed to he uploaded it when he was drunk, and somehow that has affected <laughs> what's going on screen. <laughs> I've got a horrible feeling mine's going to go to another advert in a minute. So yeah, just, that is just... coming up. One or one or the other of ours is going to go <laughs> to an advert. So I'll be ready to push. Forward. So I will. Right. The kid who plays John as well looks really familiar. I'm going to have to look him up too. Yeah. Jeremy Austin. Oh, hang on. Mine's faded to black. But he is a, a rare example of... I'm just going to pause. A yeah. rare example of a, a child actor who I don't want to punch in the face. So go give That's him some good. credit. Uh, Timing-wise, by the way, I'm on 14.07. So if uh, it, when you get back to that, just tell me and I'll press play. Uh, and it, what's the advert this time? It's uh, that Grammarly one. <laughs> that I mentioned earlier um, before we came off air with a really bad acting professor in it um, <laughs> right I'm going to skip the ad <laughs> okay as luckily it's allowing me to skip uh, what do you say you're on 1407 oh right okay I'm on 1401 when it actually starts again cool just just tell me oh dear this is a really great podcast this uh, uh, it's fine. go now 1407 Now, this will mean nothing to anybody else, and I won't make mention a name, but Wurzel does look a lot like a certain member of our family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can, I can neither agree <laughs> or deny. No. Um, he played Humphrey in Johnny Briggs, apparently, this kid. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm trying to think who Humphrey was. He's he the one posh the one, I think. I think he's the well-spoken one. Oh, from, yeah, okay. He also looks like the kid who was in Simon and the Witch, but it can't be because he's not mentioned as being in that. So No, but I see a similarity, yeah. Yeah, I think he must be, yeah, there was a well-spoken kid in Johnny Briggs' class, I think. Yeah, well, that makes sense. This <coughs> warping effect is really weird, I feel a bit ill. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you play Grand Theft Auto 4 and you're driving home drunk. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> it that, is like that. <laughs> it's that kind of feeling where you kind of, you're playing along, but it's actually really uncomfortable to look at. That's a real bird, there, isn't it? That that. It, I hope not. But then well, the I think wings are flapping, be. and it just looks really cruel. Yeah, I know. You could, they could, surely in the seventies, they could have mocked up a flapping bird. I suppose so. But then he, he says, "Oh, she likes it. It's okay," because it he's using her like a handkerchief, and it, the bird looks clearly in distress, whether it's real or fake. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not a happy bird. Oh, it's right. She likes it. <laughs> Rubs it on his face, puts it back in his stomach. That's a bit. Then he punches it, and then punches <laughs> the bird. <laughs> this kid is very accepting of a sentient scarecrow just falling into their caravan. Well, you are at that age, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at any age would it be okay with that. It's horrible. All starey-eyed, all pertwee-eyed. Look at him. <laughs> Has he got a tooth missing as well? Uh, he's supposed to have. Yeah, I think it's just blacked out though. All oh, right. Um, Fair enough. The cameras of the day, not exactly HD. It doesn't really. Uh, oh yeah, I can see it's blacked out now. Yeah. But um, he's. Uh, do you think? Uh, do you think John Pertwee's son? What's his name? Sure. Um, yeah. Do you think he would uh, be up for a remake of this? <laughs> his face is very similar to his dad's. Maybe they could incorporate into Gotham. <laughs> Maybe they could. The scarecrow. <laughs> oh Christ! Yeah. It turns out that Sean Burt that Alfred was the scarecrow all along. <laughs> That's actually. Oi, Master Bruce, come down here for a cup of tea and a slice of cake. <laughs> you slag. <laughs> I don't know the way Burr's all staring at that young boy. He's sulking. But um, I don't think this apparently. was. I don't think this was a BBC show, so it's probably okay. Yeah. <laughs> for the seventies, it's probably fine. That's Probably fine. So they've got an alcoholic dad <laughs> who doesn't look for work and just spends all his time at the pub. And then, but complains that people said he can't look after his own kids when he spends most of the time in this episode dodging looking after his kids. Yeah. Oh no, go out and explore or something. I'm going to go and get pissed. And uh, yeah, not believing him when he says that there's a scarecrow waving at him. Yeah. How the hell did that makeup take six hours? I don't know. So literally just a nose, a, probably a chin piece, although I can't really tell. Because his, his head is supposed to be made out of a, a turnip or something, is it? Yeah, he's got different heads, depending on... Yeah, because he could change heads, couldn't he? Because that used to terrify me, that uh, 
That was, that was one of the main things that was a scary sort of nightmare fuel for a child, is ripping a head off and putting another one on. Well, it's a bit like in Return to Wars, isn't it? It's that... Oh, God, yeah. It's like a Queen Mumby. Yeah. Because um, it was, it always was, it was, it always looked like quite a violent thing. The crow man had to sort of twist, and then like that neck breaking sound as it came off. That's yeah. how I remember it anyway. It probably wasn't quite as bad as that. Probably not. Was it? Hang on, are they having tea after he's been to the pub now? Because Wurzel Gummy just stolen everything. I think this is the next morning. She oh, says, she, she says, did anybody see a tramp or a tinker around? Which I think is brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> just blame them. <laughs> Just assuming that a tramp or a tinker has come in and uh, come into the caravan to steal his jacket. Yeah. Well, it looks dark outside. Or maybe it isn't. I don't know. It's just in the shade. Be... Yeah. But it's in the minute when they, you know, the policeman's trying to drive Wurzel out. <laughs> so we don't want I your sort around is, here. That is great, that bit. But um, she doesn't. She's really sceptical, and yet she heard him talk. She heard Wurzel say, oh, ah, when they asked her for his umbrella. Yeah. So I don't know why she suddenly doesn't believe it. She ran away just as fast as he did. I would have been running a lot faster. Uh, Wurzel had a collection of interchangeable turnip, mangle Wurzel, and swede heads, each suiting ah. a particular occasion or allowing him to perform a certain task. Because one of them was a, was a clever head, wasn't it? Yeah. He's just stolen, like, all this. It would be f much funnier if that was just, like, knickers and bras <laughs> and he's running <laughs> around with them. Because <laughs> I think you said that this... You described this to me in a text as... Be, the first half is like a horror movie and the second half is like a carry-on film. Yeah, And it that is. is very true. It's like a bawdy carry-on film. Especially the way the policeman is acting Pumping in Pumping up the tyre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do like Wurzel's reaction to him, though. <laughs> yeah. When he's like, you you turn left, you keep walking, we don't want your sort round here. And then he just parades around in front of him, <laughs> yeah. like, you can fuck off, mate, I'll do what I like. <laughs> it's, yeah. I mean, it's weird and horrible, but like the wanky, wanky motion of this <laughs> bump. Really wanky, wanky, mate. <laughs> <laughs> why would he just there and we just get up and turn the clear, oh, clear off? <laughs> but I do like this willful, disobedient... Aspect of Wurzel's But his character. face isn't angry, his face is kind of a. Whoa. Yeah, look at Do you expect Robin Asquith to turn up and go, Whoa! Yeah, then, we'll be uh, washing windows in the background. Then Sherry Booth's dad turned <laughs> up. Ridiculous. So his. <laughs> you just leave the bike behind if it's slowing you down, but there you go. Probably not many crimes in this small town where well, horses seems, are still being yeah, used. Horse and cars. <laughs> and they Pick him up. The binman picks up Wurzel. Because now he's an inanimate object again, but he's not. So he's obviously very light, but when he fell through that skylight, he had a definite weight about him, didn't he? <laughs> he yeah, fell and knocked he did, him over. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was full of um, robins yeah. <laughs> at that point. Oh, and oh, then he killed the robin afterwards, so yeah. it's fine. And they hijack a horse and cart, which I'd forgotten this bit when I watched it earlier. Also, mm. looked away for a minute. Quite action packed, really. Oh, see, now the warping thing is just like GTA 4 because they're driving along oh, the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's really hurting my eyes. They're actually riding that as well. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Well, it's not bad, really, as, as these things go. And they're just going to dump this straight off into a landfill or just their fly tipping, whatever they've just picked up. I don't know. I hope a sofa lands on his head. And his head comes off, doesn't it? Well, he's just all in bits, and then the, the crow man just appears out of nowhere. As if, he's got some as if by magic, as if by magic. <laughs> the crow man appeared. There goes Wurzel, falling down the tip. The kids are watching, doing nothing to help him. And his, his head, head comes off. off, and he's dead. And that's it. Show it over. Is, it's quite show. dark, because the girl does say that as well, doesn't she? He's dead. Oh, he's in... dead. What would have been funny is if they picked up the head and just booted it <laughs> <laughs> into a lake. <laughs> yeah, she's she's quite matter of fact with it. It's um, if if you didn't know, if you were sort of quite a vulnerable child and you didn't know that he wasn't dead there, that is quite yeah. traumatic. Are they taking his brolly again? Oh yeah, well somebody's got no. I think she chucks it now. Actually, yeah. Okay. You Have your brolly, you stupid dead scarecrow. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Anyway, we still got soaked. <laughs> Yeah. Since you've been pissing around, the crows have eaten all your corn. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So how does he? Because this is there's something very child catchery about the, the crow man. He is, well, yeah, he's got a chimney sweep brush. He's got a dog that's a ratter, and he he dresses more like a, an undertaker yeah. than anything else. Than any crow man I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> All the crow men I know are quite respectably dressed. Um, oh, it's that weird. I mean, it's quite clever. The the editing and stuff, making that look like his head went on was yeah. was quite good. Almost like a click into place as well. Yeah, because he did move downwards. Yeah, he did. So let's go back to the same field and whack some grass. Take it out on the grass, kid. All the beatings your dad's probably giving you. <laughs> he's, he's angry, isn't he? He's an angry kid. He is. An angry child. Oh, look. They've made a new one. Let's, let's kick it to bits. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much damage you could do to Wurzel. Like, if he can change his head and keep the same memories and stuff, like, what what part of him contains his memories and his personality? Oh. Do you see what I mean? Like, oh, he's I looking right at us. I don't like it. Oh, God. Freeze frame on that, and that's just horrible. That is awful. Here's a lovely, cheery uh, theme to bet, finish us I off. I bet you if you slowed this down though, this theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah. But like, do you think, do you think Wurzel could go through a thresher and if just like, a little bit of him was left and they made a new Scarecrow, it would still be Wurzel yeah, I do in think personality? That. That's exactly what I think. <laughs> That's the impression I'm given because his head changes don't seem to matter. They don't, or, do they? Uh, he's like a, it's like a Jesus uh, analogy when he gets onto his... Uh, yeah, well, he's just been thing. resurrected from the dead. So kind of <laughs> <laughs> it's good. He kind of has. Now, I was quite sad that we didn't see any of his head changes in that one. Or um, Aunt Sally. Uh, or Aunt Sally, the bloody awful... Just, yeah, she was, Una Stubbs. She was a, the bloody awful Una Stubbs. <laughs> she was a nightmare as a character uh, and, uh, and an actress. But, um, yeah, we didn't see any of his head changes, but I did just put together a very quick uh, game because, oh, you know, okay. this, this kind of thing just happens now. So it's not very good, not very well thought out. But basically, I, I just looked up a list of his heads and I want you to tell me whether these are real or whether I've made them up. Now, take into account, first of all, I, don't, I can't say for sure whether the ones I've made up... <laughs> aren't real but from the list i've got um the confirmed real ones is what i want you to tell me whether they're real or i made them up all right okay uh a singing head true yes that was a real wurzel gummage head apparently uh a riddle head true that was true as well, yeah. A Romany head. A Romany head. <laughs> False. No, that was a real head, apparently. Really? I, I don't. I didn't see any evidence of it, but apparently that was a real uh, head I'm that the crow man wore that made. one when he went into the caravan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, so he fitted in in the village. Yeah. Uh, a tinker's head. Well, they all sound very plausible. True. No, I made that one up. Oh. Uh, just because she said tinker earlier and I liked it. Oh, well, um, okay. An Irish head. <laughs> I hope no. <laughs> no, that was uh, <laughs> that was made up by me. A scrumping head. That's probably true. No, I made that one up. Oh. Uh, it's just like a countryside sounding thing. Uh, a we wangling, go, we wangling head. <laughs> wangling. <Yeah>. Wangling. <laughs> true. Yeah, that's a real one. Um, a uh, handsome head. That's true. I know that is true. Yeah, that's a f***ing terrifying one as well. <laughs> um, a bitter head. True. No, made that one up. Oh, it's okay. like uh, like what would be on the head of a pint of bitter. Oh, okay. and uh, clever. The last one, giving head. <laughs> that was one of Aunt Sally's. <laughs> he wishes. No, I <laughs> uh, made that one up. Um, so yeah, just a quick game. As I say, not very, very good. Nice. Um, I'll have one for you in a minute. It's oh, um, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what I, I didn't meant realize. to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Only a very short one. Um, it's Wurzel's catchphrases. Right. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah. I might put the music in, I might not. Uh, which of these are actually Wurzel's catchphrases? Um, a cup of tea and a nice slice of cake. I know that one's true, because he said that in this episode, didn't he? He did. Stop being a cock tease, Anne Sally. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, he definitely thought that one, um, okay. but I'll say that he probably didn't say it out loud. Okay, yeah, that's 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 false. That one. Um, I'll be bum swizzled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's some kind of Barrymore reference coming up, but I think that's true. It is true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which kind of ruins the next ones? I'll be Barrymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why won't you touch it? <laughs> no, because that's what I keep saying to you. <laughs> and my answer will remain the same. <laughs> uh, Bozzy McCoo. <laughs> what the? F this is that like a prog rock band? <laughs> <laughs> I think they, I, I, it doesn't sound like something you'd make up. I'm going to say true. That is true. Bozzy what? Bozzy McCoo. <laughs> In what context? It just says he also had his own language. <laughs> Where's the lees? His catchphrases <laughs> were uh, one of them being Bozzy McCoo. Bozzy McCoo. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> so just, oh, was that, was that them? <laughs> that was it. I, was, I just saw them then. I thought oh. I, I just made up the other two on the spot. Uh, that was worth it. Worth it for Bozzy McCoo. Bozzy McCoo. Yeah, because what I didn't realise is that he was, uh, obviously he was in love with Aunt Sally, but she yeah. would exploit him for her own ends. Yeah, she was a nasty piece of work. Yeah, she I said, I remember that. I mean, Una Stubbs is evil. Because I was looking up um, <clears throat> just appearances of Aunt Sally, and I think the first appearance of her, he finds her crying upside down. Because it's a coconut shy doll, isn't it? An Aunt yeah, Sally. that's right. Yeah. Um, and she's crying, and and he he's talking to her, and he's like, "Oh, don't cry, because it'll make me cry." Or he says something in Wurzelese or whatever his yeah. language is. Um, and the face on the Aunt Sally doll is completely different to una stubbs's actual yeah. face and then he turns her the right way up and she's still crying and, and whatever but then yeah she was she was awful to him because um there were other celebrities that made appearances and apparently barbara windsor appeared as like um what do they call it on the front of a boat yeah uh, um yeah I, I read that earlier she played saucy nancy <laughs> that's it yeah yeah um, uh, I can't a figurehead is it a figurehead Fig or maidenhead or something figure, yeah. yeah i think it's a figurehead hmm. Um, so I, I I don't remember ever seeing that, but it's an interesting idea. This world of sort of mannequin type characters that just come to life. Uh, yeah. but, Do you think uh, that that John Pertwee took the role of Wurzel Gummidge because he really enjoyed um, the Doctor Who episode Spearhead from Space? Well, and he hoped he might be sort of similar to the mannequins in that. Yeah, or, yeah. He might have done. Uh, I, there is sort of a weird link to it in a way. I it mean, is. I, I don't know. Maybe there was a living mannequin in in another episode. Um, it's just odd because yeah, because that's another thing. There's an uh, I can't remember who played her, but there was a, a nicer version of an Aunt Sally in one as well, apparently. Yeah, Aunt Sally um, too, played by um, Connie Booth. Connie Booth, thank yeah. you. I had looked it up. Yeah, we've both read the same. Is it a Wikipedia article by any chance? It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've both read the same Wikipedia entry. Um, but I, I see. I, I don't know. I quite like that. Just the sort of universe building so it's nothing to do with the fact that the crow man makes magic scarecrows it's just that these things all just come to life uh in general yeah. which is a, a nightmarish world to live in I've, but we uh, knew that from that anyway i've got some facts about uh words of gummage here so this is a true or false game or just in general you're just no, going to tell me general. some truths uh, okay john pert we considered this to be his favorite role hmm yeah um the series finished because Southern Television lost its franchise, much to John Pertwee's bemusement. No other company would take it, despite its rating success. Yeah, because there was a series filmed, was it in New Zealand yeah. or was it Australia? And he didn't like it very much, did he? No, he didn't enjoy it because it had to go to New Zealand. It was New Zealand. Mm. Um, another fact is, in a drunken rage, John Pertwee tried to, tried to remove Una Stubbs' head in a bizarre <laughs> parody of the show they were in. Really? Yeah. That does sound like a Mark made up fact. No, that actually happened. He tried to <laughs> remove it with a saw. <laughs> what? Well, Jesus. Did they not get on? No, I made made that up. But oh, you did make it up. Of course I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You, you sold it to me quite believably. <laughs> Obviously I made that up. It was with... Um, Wire clippers is a very long process. <laughs> well, because we all hated Aunt Sally, but you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and murder somebody who played. Well, her. by all accounts, she's not a nice mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
No, definitely. And so. quite scary in her own way as well, like the the porcelain face, the red cheeks, yeah. all very, uh, very unseemly. Well, I mean, I was always scared of Una Stubbs when she was on Give Us a Clue with Lionel mm. Blair and Michael Parkinson. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, you've got to do the... Uh, uh, what didn't didn't they used to sing his name oh, in the sorry. intro? Am I thinking of Michael something else? Michael Parkinson, do, do, do. Una Stubbs, <laughs> and Lionel Blair. <laughs> I'm, I am remembering that right, aren't I? Yeah, they you did are. Used to do the, I remember the Lionel Blair bit. <laughs> but then Una Stubbs left, and then it became Lisa Goddard. And because <laughs> they they didn't change the tune, they just forced her name. <laughs> they, they go Lisa Goddard. <laughs> <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> yeah, I like it better as well. Um, so yes, but that was that was Wurzel Gummidge. Um, yes, another another cheaty one we snuck through, but never mind. Nobody cares. No one cares. Um, so if you've liked and enjoyed the episode, then uh, you can always tweet us at Spread the Whimsy. It's one we share. We've got um, shared custody of this Twitter account. Um, I have it at weekends. Martin has it during the week. Um, unless, unless there's a funny tweet in which in the week, and that means Mark's got it. As well. um, but basically, it means yeah, Martin's <clears> got to put up with all of its schooling, whereas I just get it for the fun Saturday and Sunday uh, time. Um, you can also go to, on Facebook.com forward slash my wagon was bigger. There's stuff on there now and again, probably just the stuff from on Twitter to be honest. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, um, and also YouTube. Uh, just search Wagon Wheels Were Bigger, and something went up fairly recently, um, which is the first time in probably about six months, so that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff does happen eventually. <laughs> you will find any new content, obviously, uh, through the Twitter account as will, well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you don't like the idea of uh, talking to us on a public forum or a semi public forum, you can email us secrets at if you like wagon wheels at outlook.com, although we do also share custody of that. So don't we be do. like bad mouthing me to Mark because I will read it and um, words can hurt. Although, to be fair, I'm quite a negligent parent when it comes to the email because I don't <laughs> really look or show much interest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> I was going somewhere else for something though. I've completely forgot what I was going to say. Um, but yeah, so yeah, get in touch. Um, and yeah, if you email us a secret, we'll email you a secret. <laughs> oh no, I don't want to go there. That's uh... <laughs> I'll leave I'll, that one to you. <laughs> I'll email you a secret about Martin. All oh, right, then I can email you a secret about Mark. No, you don't know none we'll of my do secrets. <laughs> Oh, actually, maybe you do. Yeah, we won't well. do that. <laughs> I'll change my mind. <laughs> um, but hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Um, obviously, oh, yeah, and obviously, you know, rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes because, yes, you please. know, just get on with it. Just do it. It'd be nice. Otherwise, be nice. we'll send a Wurzel Gummidge severed head <laughs> round to you. <laughs> I'll kick it through your window. Um, or a live either. Robin. Or a live... No, I wouldn't ever do that to a Robin. <laughs> Not ever. No, maybe a enough. pigeon. But, um, <laughs> but hopefully you've enjoyed this episode and you'll come back next week for whatever other rubbish we decide to do I hope you will, it will be just as good it will be just as good, that is a threat so if you <laughs> hopefully you'll hear from us again next week Yeah, thank you for listening and uh, take care see take you next care. time, cheerio, bye 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 Or at daybreak, ever after we'll live happily.